I was here about 10 years ago. I did a workshop in, in uh, Cologne and I did another one for a week and another one in uh, Munich for a week, you know, about 10 years ago. And I, I'd like to tell you that Germany's changed a lot in 10 years. Um, they used to have attendants in the bathrooms on the freeway and they, now they have coin things you put in, so huge change. I so like the attendants. They cleaned up and they gave you a towel and now you just put the money in it. Cold. But they're still clean. You know. And comparing German and American writers, do you see any difference there in uh, favorite, maybe favorite genre or um, the techniques they use or the, the way they write, the style? I find that all writers, especially when they start, they have trouble showing emotions, and I think that German writers have more trouble than American writers. That the American writers, f f you know, can get past that obstacle, that hurdle when they're starting quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very difficult because I think German writers, when they're growing up, they're trained to not show their emotions, to hold their emotions, and so when they go to write, it's hard for them to. Uh, let out. It's like in America, women writers, are, women are taught uh, when they're growing up n to avoid conflict in their lives, you know, like, so they have a tendency to avoid conflict in their writing. Yeah, but I think that's probably true of women here as well. They, they avoid conflict. And so, uh, but the, get, getting people past that uh, probably is more of a struggle for a creative writing coach here in America. Well, are American writers more focused on uh, writing for the market, for the reader, than Germans are? Every writer wants to write for the market. Uh, I'd say about the same. In many ways, they're the same. You know, like, you, you ask them for ideas, they both come up, they come up with the same kinds of ideas, and uh, there's a lot of creative energy, and. They're a lot alike. They're more alike than different. But I think that, the, especially we live in California, the East Coast of the United States, people are more closed, emotionally mm -hmm. blocked than they are in California. California is considered to be a kind of badge of honor that you tell everybody how you feel about everything, you know, and that you don't hide any emotions. You let them all out. So, I mean, it was so people still don't. But I think it's, it's easier for Californians to, to get into the emotion of things. Uh, everybody has trouble uh, learning to structure stories and it's, um, it doesn't come to people easily. What would your advice be for, an, uh, for a new author? They have found in actual research that the, the successful writers are the writers that write the most in actual research, that that is the most important feature of, of the most important element in writing is not talent or education or genius or any of those things. The most important ingredient is people are persistent and they write a lot. The most successful writers are writers who have cranked out hundreds and hundreds of pages. Uh, uh, and I found that to be true in the people I've worked with that the people that write a lot are the most successful. Uh, the more you write, the better you get. And I think that's true of like playing the violin or the piano or any kind of art, for, art form. Uh, there are people who learn quickly. And, you know, in a few years they're publishing. But most people it takes, you know, eight or nine years before they really catch on to how to tell a good story. And they find their own voice and they find their own, um, kind of story that they should be writing. It takes a while to sort of feel their way. Uh, it's an amazing process. But the more you do it, the faster you're going to get there. The more there. you train. It's like to improve sports or another hobby. The same way works for writing as well. 
It's absolutely. And which are the, uh, the authors uh, you were most inspired by? But James N. Cain, believe it or not. Uh, you know who he is? No. He wrote uh, Postman Always Rings Twice. You know that? They made a film oh, yeah, of okay. it twice. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, and uh, Raymond Chandler, I really, mm -hmm. I thought Raymond Chandler was. Raymond Chandler has this incredible voice, but James N. Cain has these incredible emotional, you know, like he, he kisses the girl and sucks blood out of her lips. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, he, uh, everything with him is intense, you know. Uh, he was really a remarkable writer. And very strange theme sometimes, you know. Uh, guy falls in love with a street whore in Mexico. <laughs> it's a, an opera singer who's lost his voice. It, it's an amazing writer. Uh, but also his prose was really, was really good, uh, fine prose, uh, almost poetry, but it was a lowbrow kind of poetry. I recommend James N. Cain to anybody, he's really... And uh, your, your new book, How to Write a Damn Good Thriller, is now being published here in Germany. Yeah. How long did you work on this book, on writing it? You know, I love thrillers. I've written a lot of them, and I teach uh, a lot of thriller writers, so I'm like, and I love the genre. I love it more. Than, I like mystery, but I love thrillers more. I think they're more exciting, and I think they're easier to read. They're easier to write because you don't have to think up all the damn clues. <laughs> uh, I thought when I started, I thought, oh, six months, I can knock this off. Okay. So how long did it take? Closer to three years. Yeah, and, and I made a really stupid mistake. In the other writing books that I've done, I, I created examples of a story by creating kind of a simple story, you know? Say, here's how you do it, here's how it's done. In the thriller thing, I thought, well, I've always done simple. I'll do complicated ones, show people how to do a complicated thriller. Oh my God, what a mistake that was. It is. <laughs> To make it complicated and still make it easy to read and understand was uh, just un... But then once I got into it, it was like going into the sucking bog. Once you're in it, the more you fight, the more you're sucked in. And you, you can't get out, you know? Yeah. So I had to finish it anyway. So, it took so a who reads your um, books, your wife, or you have friends who read your books first? Or you know, I have a mentor s since the six, 69, and he's now 94. And he's the best critic I know. He's uh, fantastic. And then I have a kind of a co... Uh, uh, in my workshops that I do, I, I have a, a woman that d d we do workshops together. And uh, she's also good. And I have others, uh, students of mine that are good critics. My wife's a good critic, but uh, I don't like to take it from her. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she, she gives me some advice uh, about, the, you know, she'll say, oh, you went too far, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Anything planned for the future? I'm writing, a, I'm writing a, 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 a book about an actual a soldier in World War II, a real guy, but I'm writing it as a novel. In, uh, he was in the Battle of Saipan. He was killed in the Battle of Saipan mm -hmm. uh, in the South Pacific. I'm writing about him. But I, it's, as I started into it, it's opened up, and now it's about more than just this one guy. It's about, you know, it's just, yeah, and now I'm t I thought, well, people don't really understand what happened, what, why the battle was important. People don't understand World War II, I thought. So I, so I have these kind of nonfiction sections to mm -hmm. sort of explain, you know, what they were doing there and why it was important and stuff like that. But it's, uh, it's been, I've been working on it about a year, and it's fascinating to... To, it's very difficult to find first-person accounts that, that gives you the feeling. Of, I mean, they, they, had, they, they had malaria, they had uh, dysentery, they had uh, four or five different jungle fevers they didn't really understand. Uh, uh, at any given time, half the guys were sick. Uh, and Japanese, too, they were all sick. Uh, and they were starving as well. It's just, oh. 
you know, and 250,000 guys on that island. And it's only like 16 miles long. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like impossible to believe, you know. Uh, but it was, it's uh, fascinating to, to read about it. And it's interesting to write about it. Try to, try to capture the feelings of the people of the times, you know. Uh, and uh, it's, it's difficult. But I, I, I think when I'm done, I think it'll be good. The st sometimes the stuff that's hardest to write turns out the best. Yeah. So, so we hopefully will be able to read it here in Germany as well? I hope so. Worldwide, I, I hope. Everyone should read this book. It's the American War and Peace. I just read War and Peace so that I would have a sense of writing a war novel. So I just, I read War and Peace. This is the third time I've read War and Peace. And uh, I love that book. Uh, and if, if you wouldn't have become a, a writer, what would be your favorite job or profession? A hitman. A hitman? High, high pay, low hours. You only work a couple of days a year, uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, I'd I'd be a hitman, I think. No, if I if I wasn't a writer, I'd be dead. I wouldn't have a profession, right? Okay. Would have drank myself to death a long time ago. So writing was, is not. There a, was never a doubt in you that you would be a writer. Writing is not a job. It's not even a profession. It's a way of life. Mm -hmm. It's like it. It, it, it absorbs you. You get absorbed into this uh, writer thing, and that's it. It's not like uh, it's. It's not like my father wanted me. My, my, my father. My father wanted me to be a dentist. He said you can work a lot of hours when you're young, pile up a lot of money, and then only work a few hours when you're older. And I said, yeah, but you're looking in mouths all day long. <laughs> Oof. No, it's a. Uh, uh, you know, it's, you know what writing is? It, it, it's a, a mental disorder and, one, and there's no cure, you know? You, it, it's only like there's a kind of a palliative that makes you feel better, which is writing. If you don't do it, you start feeling worse. So, uh, so you keep doing it because if you don't do it, you feel horrible. So write, 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 write. Uh, but it's a it's a kind of mental disorder. It, you didn't get enough love when you were a kid. That's the problem. I mean, that's why you got this disorder. Uh, you probably were beaten, uh, or or psychologically wiped out by nasty parents. That's why you became a writer. Uh, there's a, another kind of person that becomes a writer, and that's a parent like me, who. Uh, uh, I would see, I'd see a banana peel on the lawn and my, my daughter would say, oh, look, somebody threw this banana peel on the lawn. I'd say, no, that, that's from the monkeys that live in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> so, that kind of, so the parents that like really encourage imagination, yeah. they end up with writers for children. That's their reward. You know, usually when you tell somebody, you told your husband or your father or your mother, your brother, I'm going to be a writer, they go, oh, my God. <laughs> Be a communist. Don't be a writer. You know, be anything. Uh, you know, uh, be a dentist. Oh, writer, don't do that. Uh, but it's uh, it, uh, the people that I know that, that that I've worked with that write. Almost all of them are sick. Mentally. Hmm? Mentally. They're compulsive. They have to write. They 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 can't stop. Uh, the very idea of stopping. Uh, that's why, like, people say, Shakespeare retired and went back to Avon and lived six more years and didn't write anything. And I go, no, he didn't. That, <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> huh? It's not possible. Uh, writers just keep, uh, my, my mentor's 94, he's still writing. And he writes well. That's a truly amazing thing. You know, he writes really well. Uh, for I mean, at that age, full of fire. And uh, yeah, it's really amazing. But I think writers, it, it keeps your mind alive. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, George Bernard Shaw, I think he died at 94. He was writing great plays. You know, yeah. Uh, 
thank you very much. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for having me here in Germany. I've it's had a wonderful time. I met some really f swell, fine people, and uh, I, it's very energizing t to work with these writers. Very energizing. I I hardly feel my 39 years. <laughs>